this video, I'm going to do my very best to give an overview of a three different microphone setups that might be right for an ambitious or somewhat ambitious beginner podcaster like myself. I don't want to call this a review though, because I'm not a professional audio engineer or a pro podcaster or something like that. But I have edited one or two handful of episodes of my own podcast and by that got into that whole topic a bit. Um, and I spent countless hours of research on the internet and well by that discovered that you can read and read and read, order a mic, unpack it and still be disappointed with it. So with this video I want to make things at least a little bit easier for you. Let's get right to the first mic. The first microphone we take a look at is the Blue Yeti. So it's somewhat heavy, it's big-ish, um, it goes on Amazon Germany for anything from 95 to 130 euro. This is the Samsung C01U Pro. It's also like the Blue Yeti, a USB mic and also a um, condenser microphone. Um, it goes on Amazon for, on Amazon Germany as well um, for 75 euro, so it's a bit cheaper. And this setup is a bit different. It's um, not a, as you can see, it's not a USB mic, but this is an interface with an USB output um, that allows you to put, um, to have two XLR inputs that go then through USB uh, into your computer. So um, the XLR mic I chose is the Shure SM58. Um, this is like your stereotypical microphone. It's rock solid, it's ages old, it, it might last a hundred years. Um, but it's, it's made more for live vocal performances. Um, well, and the interface um, I chose is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. It goes on Amazon Germany for 130 euro. So it's a bit more expensive already than these, my, uh, these microphones here. And the Shure SM58 goes new for uh, anything from 100 euro, I think, on Amazon. Um, but you can get used ones on eBay. You have to look out for fakes, though. And now let's take a closer look at each one of these. Well, okay, the Blue Yeti. Um, as I already said, it's, it's big, uh, somewhat heavy. Its build quality is fine, like it won't break, but it's really not great. Like there are, you can see on the stand here, there are like not really smudges, but you can see how it was like put together. Um, this stand thing is really annoying, I have to say. Um, you know, um, like when you when you turn it, these things uh, rotate with it, so they get loose, and then it, this happens. Oh well, yeah, and um, it's it's really quite annoying. I mean, everybody who wants to use it more professionally will um, put it on a on a boom and then have it hang there. But I don't know, not not the greatest. But again, totally fine. Um, yeah. Regarding the stand, the blue microphones, um, as you maybe guessed, are a bit more, um, excuse me, get a bit more fancy. So and and the accessories are, uh, are a bit more expensive as well. Um, so since we're looking at beginner setups, you uh, may want to keep that in mind. I think the. The shock mount uh, for this microphone goes for like 60 euro, and which is a bit more expensive than your standard shock mount. Well, but again, back to the uh, Yeti. Um, it has a mute button that comes in handy, more on that later. A volume knob for the uh, volume of the monitoring or just audio output here on the, on the bottom. And it has a gain volume knob that is very handy as well. And here you can set the pickup pattern. That is very important because, as I said, it's a condenser mic, so the characteristic is that it normally would pick up the whole room, like sound from the whole room. 
With this pickup pa pattern though, um, it only picks up sound that comes from, from, uh, from the front. So that's our ideal setup for podcasting. It still picks more up than a uh, dynamic mic that's more isolating other uh, sound sources, but it's totally fine for podcasts. But the most important thing, of course, is the sound quality. So I'm going to test that. I'm going to record right into Audacity. And I think I'm going to put up the file separately as well for easier comparison. Yeah, let's get to it. So this is me now talking directly into the Yeti. Um, I can adjust the volume of the monitoring I hear through my headphones um, on the volume knob on the front, which is quite handy. This is, uh, yeah, that's all right. Uh, I can adjust the, the um, gain here on the knob. I now have a setting uh, which I think is loud enough, but doesn't let me clip. So, um, yeah, I like the sound, I have to say, of uh, the sound of my voice through the, the Yeti. Um, and it also has very little hiss, which is, I think, kind of important for beginners since dealing with that in post-production is, is kind of hard and you want the, the most, the, the cleanest signal you can get, really. So, um, oh yeah, and I am on the um, setting I mentioned above that's only gonna pick up wh um, what I say directly into the microphone um, and altering the condenser, co condenser microphone characteristic a bit. So I'm gonna move away now from the mic and you can see how that affects the sound. See, I'm now moving away and yeah, I'm re you're hearing me, but not really in a good way. So, um, and now I'm moving back in front of the microphone. Yeah, and you can see it's it's better. It's it doesn't act like a like a dynamic microphone, but I think it's good to have this to have this behavior. And I'm gonna type it a little bit now, so you can see how that that's affecting the sound. So this is me testing the Blue Yeti microphone. So I guess yeah, you heard that, but um, yeah, I guess it's not terrible. Yeah, that's that. Let me see. Have I? Do I have more on here? Uh, oh yeah, of course. Um, I mentioned the mute, mute button before. Um, as you can see, when I press it, and now I'm back. Yeah, which is quite handy because when you're like like me now working on a recording. I mean, I guess for podcasters that's not really the most important use case. But if you're working on it on on something on a recording. Um, and you monitor yourself, then you you hear everything that happens in front of the mic, even though it 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 uh, might not be interesting to you right at that moment. See, when I'm now working on that this recording, and then I'm breathing into the microphone, um, that's annoying. So with the mute button, I can press that, and then the monitoring is off because the microphone is off. But I still hear the sound uh, I play on my PC through the output that the uh, blue yeti also offers so i find that quite quite handy because then you don't have to um don't have to fiddle around with the software you're using or something like that this is the samsung c01u pro it's also a condenser mic um, and also a usb mic um, it's a bit more standard than the Blue Yeti. It also comes with a stand, which is a little more, well, it looks more fragile, but it's like, it's okay. It totally works, even though the, the microphone is quite heavy. Like you can't get, get too wild with it. Um, but the whole thing is a bit more standard, you know, it's more, it's a bit more sturdy. It's, it's um, yeah, I don't know, it's not as fancy, but I quite like the design. And honestly, the build quality is much better than the Yetis. It has a um, headphone output on the front and no knobs or anything like that, which can be annoying because of the monitoring um, thing that I uh, alluded to when I talked to the Yeti. Well, but let's plug in the Samsung. So this is me uh, talking on the Samsung now. I like my voice through it a bit better than through the Yeti, I have to say. Um, I'm also going to do my little type test here. This is me. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that's uh, that's all right. And I'm also uh, now wandering a little, a little away from the microphone. 
and this is how that sounds and this is how that sounds and now I'm wandering um, to the microphone again so and here I am um, yeah but when you're recording it doesn't have any volume knobs so any any adjustment in gain or vo volume of the monitoring you have to adjust through the software and that's I don't know I, for me that's very annoying um, when I'm recording because I want to focus on the recording itself and then looking at the software is I don't know not 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 a great experience but the Samsung has an LED now I'm recording it's green and when I'm clipping it gets uh, it's red the blue yeti lacks that and I find it I mean it's it's handy when you uh, see that um, but I have to speak out a warning at, at first I thought the Samsung has a had a higher noise floor a louder hiss than the blue yeti now I really find that's not the case um, I don't know how I, how I got to that conclusion but uh, I wanted to play around with the sound and there is Samsung software that has uh, some kind of noise reduction and um, I'm gonna activate that now and this this is how it sounds so it's really 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 bad you don't want to activate that so I'm gonna deactivate it now so and but so I deactivated it and uh, uninstalled the software um, but when I plugged in the Samsung again the next time it sounded like that again so I don't know I mean it's not it's not broken or anything but I think you want to stay away from that kind of software um, yeah that's uh, everything I have now on the Samsung um, let's get to the next setup so um, this is the focus right Scarlett 2i2 interface and this is a nice piece of hardware it's sturdy it's solid it has knobs that feel nice just great just as the Shure SM58 as I said this is the a rock solid thing you can throw it under a truck and it will just work maybe the the cage here will be bent uh, but it's it's these are just solid pieces of hardware um, yeah, as I said, um, this is an XLR microphone, so analog, and it, uh, it connects here. You have uh, the gain knobs here, and a monitoring out, and a volume knob for that. And here on the back, you can plug in uh, the USB cable and put that to your computer. Also, you can um, plug in monitoring speakers. If you enter that and of course the this 2i2 uh, model I have um, has another XLR input so you could theoretically record uh, two speakers or uh, whatever at a time uh, let's hear it so this is me talking to the SM58 I'm gonna undo it here just a sec um, okay um, so you see the green light around the um, gain knob here. This is quite nice, a good indicator when you're working on stuff so that the, that the gain is okay. And when I'm um, knocking against it, it gets uh, red, uh, which is a sign that I clipped. So that works really nice, I think. Um, but you also notice that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, at 90, 95, 100% here. So the, the SM58 needs a lot of gain, really. So, I don't know, that's a pity. I, I like everything else about this setup, but the SM58 needs a lot of gain. And in direct comparison, I don't like the sound as much. I mean, it's totally fine, it's okay. Um, and the dynamic mic here has, like, its characteristics. It's nice at rejecting room sound. Um, but, um, I don't know, it's, it, the voice sounds a bit, a bit harsher. There are not that many details, not as open, I think. Um, well, but other, other than that, the Focusrite Scarlet is, is nice. I have the, the volume knob here for the monitoring on my headphones. I have the switch here, so I can turn it off. Now I don't hear anything. And now I'm back. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, again, but the, the whole gain thing is, is a pity because, I don't know, I would buy an XLR interface because that's something for the future for any any mic I would ever use, but uh, the SM58 has needs much more gain, and maybe the next uh, microphone I buy will need even more. And then I bought this nice interface that's interchangeable 
for the mic uh, for for nothing really and i don't think that's worth it um especially not for for a beginner podcaster who doesn't know where the path leads really so yeah that's that's this setup so we're coming to the conclusion solely the, uh, considering voice quality I like the samsung best which is so weird because it's the cheapest microphone but then the the lack of um no knobs and possibilities of adjustment right at the microphone kind of i don't know right somewhat frustrating there the yeti really trumps um you can adjust any any volume and and pattern right on the microphone that is really nice um purely from a hardware perspective i like the focus right best and the combination of of the sm58 uh, and the focus right i wanted this to be the solution because um this interface comes across as being like an investment in the future but then with the sm58 again you have the um the you need the maximum of gain so you maybe need another preamp for another microphone and that's just not what you buy the most expensive piece of hardware for i think which is really pretty because i like i like the knobs and just having a dedicated uh, hardware thing for that it's really nice um but this package is i, I don't think uh, worth the 230 euro new uh, for not even the best voice quality really so I think I'm gonna stick with the blue Yeti, which is the boring choice. I'm aware of that. Everybody recommends it, but I wanted to be sure about it. <laughs> no pun intended. And yeah, this is, I think, what I'm gonna stick with. My name is Tim. Um, my website is timschuf.com, T-I-M-M-S-C-H-O-O-F.com. Um, yeah, or hit me up on Twitter. My na uh, nickname there is T Shoof, T S C H W O F. Thanks for watching. And since it's Christmas and my Christmas tree is hidden behind the camera, happy Christmas.